A male in his 40s presents with pain in his right index finger after a hyperextension injury. What's the diagnosis? Let's go through the case. Here we have an x-ray of the right index finger. First though, let's have a look at the frontal view. Here we can see the metacarpal, the proximal phalanx, middle phalanx and distal phalanx. The first step with any post-trauma x-ray is to look for soft tissue swelling and we can see the soft tissue of the index finger looks swollen when compared to the middle finger. Next assess alignment and check each phalanx lines up with the adjacent one. This here looks okay. Now let's look for a fracture. The cardinal signs of a fracture on an adult x-ray are a break in the cortex and a loosened line. So don't be afraid to zoom up before running your eyes around the cortex of each bone. I can't see a fracture on this film. With every trauma film, however, remember that one view is known as no view. So we need a second view. Let's have a look at the lateral. Again, the soft tissues look swollen, but let's have a look at the cortex of each bone again. This time we can see a break in the cortex at the base of the middle phalanx, just above the proximal interphalangeal joint. This is a classic location of a volar plate injury. The volar plate is a fibrocartilaginous structure that helps maintain stability of the proximal interphalangeal joint and helps to prevent hyperextension of the joint. It originates from the proximal phalanx and inserts onto the base of the middle phalanx. Sudden hyperextension can result in partial or complete rupture of the volar plate. Now this more often happens distally at the base of the middle phalanx, rather than at the proximal phalanx as check rein ligaments here make this insertion stronger. It's common to see an avulsion fracture at the base of the middle phalanx like we have here. In some cases there can be subluxation or dislocation of the proximal interphalangeal joint. In this case, like in most volar plate injuries, the management is conservative with splinting. But intervention is considered when the fracture fragment involves more than 40% of the proximal interphalangeal joint surface and aren't reducible in less than 30 degrees of flexion. So when you see finger pain and swelling after an hyperextension injury, remember to check your lateral view for volar plate injuries. 